Coming up on Main Street, we'll show you three places in the Commonwealth that let the sun shine bright on their old Kentucky facilities and use this bright energy in very different ways. On this edition of Main Street, Going Green. Funding for Main Street was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And by viewers like you who support quality programs such as Main Street that appear only on public television. Hello and welcome to Main Street. I'm your host, Barbara Deeb. On this edition of the program, we're going to bring you stories about people who've decided to take a pioneering step into solar power. Our journey begins with a story about Kim and Bart Roberts at Garden Spot Produce in Franklin, Kentucky. The Roberts come from farm families that have farmed for years and wanted to continue the tradition with their farm. They've worked out ways to add in new techniques and technologies to make their farm both productive and efficient. The idea of solar intrigued them and let them explore the idea of renewable energy, which they think of as a way of giving back to their family and community. Richardsville Elementary in Richardsville, Kentucky was constructed from the ground up as a model of energy efficiency using both solar and geothermal energy. These groundbreaking designs have made Richardsville a national leader in sustainability and faculty, staff and students had a hand in the design. Ongoing lessons about alternative forms of energy and conservation have made Richardsville and the surrounding community partners in this award-winning elementary school. Our last story takes us to Crofton in western Kentucky, where the operators of Constellation Farms have taken a step toward energy independence with one of the largest solar arrays in that part of the state. Bruce Klein and his cousin Kendall Clark looked into using solar to make their farm not only more effective in the energy they use, but to make a move toward one day being free from the energy grid. We're going green with these solar stories on this edition of Main Street. Solar Energy Pioneers invited us up to a meet and greet that they had at their facility and they discussed all of the benefits of solar, the process of installing solar, the applications and all of that. So that got us kind of interested in solar and the more we thought about it, the more we got to thinking that it was something that we thought would benefit our farm and what we're trying to do here. So she attended the meeting at, uh, at Solar Pioneers brought back information, we went through the information and after looking at all the numbers, it, it was just a, a no-brainer to go that route. You know, offsetting our, our electric bill is a biggie. Everybody knows what their electric bill every month is every month. Also, the tax benefits and depreciation being a farmer, you know, uh, giving back to the earth as well, uh, giving back to the environment. So Garrett mentioned, uh, you know, uh, the environmental part and the financial, he's right, and uh, as far as we are, it's both. So that's our stance on it. We have two different customers. We have a customer who wants solar for the environment, who wants to go green, who wants to um, do their part to make the earth better. We have another customer who looks at it as a total financial benefit. A lot of those customers who are looking at it as the financial are stewards of the land, they're farmers, but uh, their main reason is, is their, the financial ramifications. That system out there is a 12 kW system uh, and it's designed to produce pretty much all the kilowatt hours that they need to offset what they used last year as they expand and, and, and it may change or whatever. But that's a 12 kW sun power system. Uh, they're 327 watt panels. We have SMA inverters 
Uh, those are two of the finest products on the market. Uh, SunPower has been in business for 30 years, so they are the grandfather of solar. They have the highest efficiency, they have the world record efficiency, uh, and the best warranty on the market. So what they have here is really a 50-year system. Now, it's got a 25-year warranty. Um, with our racking, our groundnut racking, everything, everything's galvanized and, and aluminum so it shouldn't rust. And there's no moving parts, so there's no real maintenance other than possibly washing. Uh, it's just going to sit there and produce electricity and offset their electric bill. Since our, our unit was commissioned in July, we've only had, we got our first electric bill this last month, and it was like $7.47. So that in itself, over time, is going to cause that system to pay for itself. And once it does, an electric bill is going to be pretty much a thing in the past for us. Well, it's benefited us, and of course, it benefits the whole community as far as it's, it's, uh, it's environmentally friendly. I mean, it's a clean, renewable source of energy, and it's something that we think we can implement here on the farm through various reasons, and it's, it's, uh, it kind of adds to our diversification that we're trying to do. And then on the farming side, I grew up in the farming industry most of my life. It means everything. It's, it's our way of life. It's very rewarding and being able to put that crop out there and, and baby it and watch it grow and it gets as far as even the row crop or vegetables, whatever it is, we start it from scratch. We manage it, we plan, we hope for good weather. And it's just to see the final product going into the combine or into the grain trucks or into the back of our pickup truck in boxes to go sell to the farmer's market, you see it from beginning to end and it makes you really appreciate what you see and it makes you appreciate your hard work that you do during the year. It just makes it all worth it. And then the vegetables, when you see people commenting on, oh, I just loved your tomatoes, they were so good. And it's, it's just very rewarding. It's about the most rewarding job I think you could have in, in our eyes. I would like to, eventually I would like to have my greenhouses and high tunnels. You know, if we can work that into powering the greenhouses. Um, the solar is just, the solar's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, it's, I never really even dreamed that we'd go solar until we went to that, that uh, luncheon that they had, uh, Solar Energy Pioneers, because I just never thought about it. I always thought, oh, that's just way out there. It's, just, it's too complicated, but they took us through the whole process. They took really good care of us, and at the end, I thought, oh my gosh, why did we do this a long time ago? You know, it's kind of crazy, but it was really easy. And uh, I, hopefully we can expand on solar eventually too. I just want to say that, uh, you know, the whole, the solar, the whole endeavor of solar, it was very easy. It was, uh, I believe it's very cost effective. Like I said before, it's just, uh, I think it's a wise investment and good for the environment. I feel like Richardsville Elementary is a total learning environment. Uh, you know, it teaches them about sustainability. Uh, it teaches them uh, firsthand. They can see it, they can touch it. Uh, so for those visual learners, those on-hand learners, they can see it and they can touch it. But I think uh, the big thing is, is we're passing something on to the generations that they'll pass on the generations of their kids to be energy conscious, be good stewards of the environment. They're learning about sustainability. Uh, there's children in this school, and it's a, a kindergarten through sixth grade school, there's children in this school that know more about geothermal and solar energy than most adults. Our student energy team really works with peers within the building to lead them and teach them energy concepts, um, how our building works and is energy efficient, as well as um, concepts to do with energy, like renewable energy. We had a big fair last year. And they also work with our community. We have community events where people can come in and learn about energy, as well as school tours. When we have groups, a lot of times they like for the students to take them and teach them about the building. I was in a compost group. What, what we did was we showed them how you, 
a compost worked and there was wind power and solar power and everybody liked it. Richardsville is kind of unique. Uh, you know, we had a planning committee that sat down and discussed what all we needed to look at. We're always concerned about safety in school, uh, so the building walls themselves also have a 250 mile per hour wind resistant wall, so it's a real good place to be in a severe weather situation. Uh, we have solar tubes that bring in natural lighting. The building itself has no water heater, so to speak. We use the uh, residual uh, energy produced from the geothermal well and store that for hot water. And it's just uh, really been an overall concept, uh, even down to reducing uh, the square footage of the building by eliminating a uh, computer lab. In lieu of having an actual computer lab, which would have added about eight to 1,000 square feet that we'd had to condition, we have laptops on carts, which we have four of those available, which are mobile. Teachers sign them out, take them to their classrooms, and they have an in-house uh, computer lab available to them. We love the new building. Um, the transition over here, the kids were in awe of their new building, not just the newness of it, but all of the great things within it. We, we got to see it being built. We, we got to take a tour through it while it was being built. It, it, it was really cool to see like how they were building it and where our classroom was going to be. You know, our hallways are, are separated into different concepts. So we have a water conservation hallway and there's an interactive mural there where they can see um, how the water cycle um, is part of energy and then it was developed with our Warren County Water District so then they can see how um, that water becomes part of what they use in their homes and the hospitals and the school um, as well as we have a rain garden and we talk about um, collecting rainwater and, and using that. Then you go into the solar hall where they're learning about daylighting strategies and um, those habits and photovoltaic cells. Um, we have geothermal and downstairs they get to um, learn about how we use heat from the, the earth itself. And then they have the recycling hallway and that goes back to those habits that we have to develop to be good stewards um, of the earth in general. I just enjoy being at Richardsville Elementary School because I see the, the students, they enjoy being here. The teachers, they enjoy talking about the facility. It just seems like to be a good climate or an atmosphere to be in. As you go down the hallways and you see the kids enjoying their facility, it, it just gives me great joy in doing that. To be able to share our success, it, it's been, you know, uh, kind of like uh, an explanation point of, of success of everybody working in a collaborative effort to make something successful. Richardsville Elementary, uh, a typical school in the state of Kentucky, uh, using a unit of measure, uh, uses typically 73 kBT per square foot to operate. Richardsville Elementary operates around 18. We have a, a renewable source of energy, which is solar panels, uh, that generates energy for us and uh, we actually use uh, Richardsville Elementary as a platform for the, the solar panels. And we measure it uh, with a consumption meter, which is what the building uses, and then we also have a production meter, and that's how much energy that the solar panels produce. What we hope to do is have a net zero balance between the two, or that's the goal that we have in place. Uh, we've been very fortunate uh, since the schools opened We've been able to annually uh, produce more energy than we've consumed, actually making us a net zero plus building. And that's money that uh, we can redirect back into the general funds of the school and use uh, for areas uh, that are in need, whether it's technology, whether it's new buses, uh, whether it's teacher salaries, whatever. It's just not uh, money that's gone out for a utility bill. I I'm very proud of Richardsville Elementary School. Uh, and I'm proud of Warren County Public Schools for taking the initiative and being a leader in, in doing this type of project. Because, you know, uh, no one had done this type of project before. They were challenged, uh, but they, the, the, the designers, the leadership, uh, the teachers, the staff, they all stepped up, they all took the challenge and embraced it and made it work. I got to go here, so I'm grateful.
um, my own children go here and I see the opportunities that it's given them and the pride that they've had in it. And, um, and that makes me feel good as a parent, not just as a teacher. The solar part of what we do here is, is you know, we just took a chance that, that, that it would turn out good, and it has. The array here on the farm is, well, like I said, it's rated at 200 kW. It consists of uh, 840 three by five panels. That's the three by five sections you've seen in the arrays. You've got footage of that. Those, I think there's five different arrays. Those things are arranged. They're, you have to have the sites evaluated. They have to have direct sun from the south, but they do get the full. Our arrays are fixed, they're, they're just stationary. They do make some that follow the sun that are a little more efficient, but it's kind of like when you get those, you get into the, the maintenance and, and upkeep issues like you would with a wind generator. So as much back and stuff as we feel with, we don't have time to go out and tinker with servo motors and, and stuff like that. So we've, those are all fixed. They feed into that inverter that's inside that enclosure. That's the, that's the sure enough heart and brain of the, the system. That's where there, there's more money in that box than there is in all of those panels. That thing will take a small amount of current off of the line, which is a 14, I think that particular line is 14,400 volts. It measures that current and then it takes 350 DC volts and converts it to the exact same thing so it goes into that power grid seamlessly. It's, they've averaged about 270 something kW for the first two years and if sun don't go away, I think they'll continue to do that. I'd say the, the biggest deal, just being at the right place at the right time and, and took some chances early on and, and, and now I got the solar part of, of what I do is just it kind of started with a, you know, there's some boys from Georgia that come up here and deer hunt, you know, that, that I became friends with. They, for, you know, maybe a year or so, they were talking about solar this, solar that, how they, they, they live in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Georgia. And they were telling me about all these big projects taking place. And I think we had three sites approved. We built two of them, one here in Crofton, the other one is at Hopkinsville. And, uh, but we did stop at two, Two facilities, you know, and they're both 200 kW. But anyway, that's. Uh, but 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 the reasoning why I done it is, uh, you know, the whole nation was being held hostage by our inability to to take care of ourselves, produce our own oil, and, and all that came with it. So, you know, the the green energy thing was really taking off at that point in time, and that's that's kind of you know we. My big deal is. And our big deal, I should speak for Charles and myself, but we're just trying to help our nation become energy independent, you know, not being so tied to someone else's wants and whims of, of, of doing business. So that's kind of where it started and kind of how, you know, uh, and of course, we, you know, we wanted investment. Don't, you know, don't, don't ever let me mislead you that we, we just done it because we're a couple of good old boys and wanted to help secure the planet. You know, it was. It, there was a business aspect to it that looked pretty good to us too. You know, that's kind of where it all came from, came about. What it does for me personally, as I said earlier, you know, I just want to do anything that'll help. You know, if you look at if you look at the clock, you know, and I'm, I'm real big on a, using analogies all the time. I can't hardly talk without doing it. But you know, if you look at the clock of my life, you know, I'm it's a quarter to twelve. You know, in all reality. And so, you know, I just want to make this a better place by me being here or, or, or whatever. You know, I want to do something that helps our nation or my children or my neighbor's children become energy independent from, um, from the rest of the world. You know, and, you know that's, that was probably the, you know, that's the one thing that kind of swung the pendulum, if you would, in, in this direction. You know, just wanted to do something that made a difference. Try to 
And, and on the solar end of it, I think that's one thing that, that, that maybe we're a little bit ahead. Like you say, we might be ahead. I, uh, when you hear threats of cyber terrorism and everything, it would be nice to have your home and your farm self-sufficient energy-wise. You know, even if for a short term, it would just give, it would give you a peace of mind that not a lot of people have. But that's, and like I said, that's uh, the advantage of being on, on the farm and in agriculture. I mean, I, I think you do have a, I think you have a sense of self-reliance and, and self-sufficiency that, that not many people have. My wife, uh, you know, she, she came from the city and, and uh, you know, I tell everybody, or, or Candy never could understand how I, I could grow up knowing what I was going to be or wanted to be or, or, or I, you know, I actually knew what I was going to do from the time I was two or something. You know, I just, I just knew I was going to do it. You know, we got, uh, we got two daughters, Candy and myself, and, you know, I'm currently in the son-in-law business, I guess, you know, here sometime uh, in the future, but, you know, I don't know whether, whether the farm will continue as a, to be a, a participating farm actively in production. You know, I do hope the girls can main, you know, I want them to hold the land. You know, land is, it's pretty precious to me. You know, it's a, it's a big deal for me. You know, the, 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 the iron and the machinery, the mechanics it takes to run it, not so much. You know, that's just how we make a living. Uh, been good to us, but you know, whether that part continues or not, you know, that really isn't that big a deal, but I would like to see the land retained from ever how long they want to retain. The success that I've enjoyed, isn't, you know, it's not because I was smart, I was just at the right place at the right time and extremely lucky and had a lot of good people helping me. And since, you know, kind of since we got going, there's been, you know, I can think of maybe as many as a dozen smaller ones that, that folks have put in here in the county. So, you know, and that's my dream that it would just, that it would, you know, our, you know, we might have been some of the first to develop here in the western part of the state. And, um, you know, and, 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 and ju just to see other people get involved in, in the transformation that maybe hopefully will continue to take place as we move forward into the future, that, that a lot more people will be, uh, become involved and uh, have solar energy, you know, for Kentucky and for the nation, you know. We're all in this kind of together. Well, we've come to the end of our journey, and we hope you've enjoyed this sojourn into the high-tech world of solar energy. Garden Spot Produce in Franklin has a solar array that Kim and Bart Roberts wanted as a way to give something back to their families and their community through the use of renewable energy on their farm. While the designers of Richardsville Elementary were looking for sustainability when they built the school, they had no idea they would be the nation's first net zero school. This means they produce as much clean energy as they consume and sell energy back to TVA on an annual basis. The faculty, staff, and students have learned the lessons of renewable energy and conservation and passed them on to anyone who wants to learn. Consolation Farms in Crofton, Kentucky have one of the largest solo arrays in Western Kentucky, and they've taken a first step toward what they hope will one day be energy independence. We're always looking for new stories to tell, and our producers would love to hear from you. We welcome comments, questions, or story ideas. Check out the webpage at the address on your screen. You can find other editions of Main Street there as well. From the old College Street Bridge in Bowling Green, Kentucky, I'm Barbara Dean. And remember, we're just around the corner on Main Street. <laughs>